Philip Galler, and this is the new offices of Lux Machina in downtown Los Angeles. Some of the things that we're going to show you today include camera tracking with LiveLink, set extension tools, we're going to look at an end display, we're going to look at an iPad control, live compositing using green screen, in camera visual effects, beautiful lighting, and organic reflections. Last but not least, we're going to be talking with Magnopus about the virtual scouting tools that are in Unreal Engine 4. And before I throw you over to uh, Magnopus, let me introduce a few of the other people we have here today. Um, we've got uh, Matt Workman, who's our DP. We've got Matt Madden from Profile, AJ and Fernando from Magnopus, and Quixel, who designed this beautiful scene you see behind me using some Megascan assets. I'm AJ Shudo, virtual production producer from Magnopus. This is Fernando Ribello, our virtual production tech operator for Magnopus. Magnopus has used our virtual production expertise to design a VR scouting toolset directly in Unreal 4.23. And what this toolset allows you to do is to pre-scout your environment before you even hit stage. We have a director's viewfinder that allows him or her to see what the world looks like through their camera. The measuring tool is for production designers in the art department to determine how big these worlds are going to be. We also have a set dressing tool to grab and move pieces of the environment to help compose the shot. So as you can see from Fernando's view here, everything he sees in his headset is happening live on the wall in real time. So Fernando, I think we want to keep that space open, so let's go ahead and fly that rock out of here. Hey, my name is Matt Workman, and I'm the cinematographer on this project. My philosophy when I'm shooting in this volume is that I want to treat this like I'm shooting in the real world. And this is enabled by two concepts. The first is that when we move the real world camera, this virtual world here is going to shift perspective to give the effect like we're in a real location. And the second concept that enables this is that we are surrounded by the virtual world and the virtual world is going to light the real world space here. Right now, I'm being completely illuminated by the screen surrounding me. So today we're shooting with the Airy Alexa LF, which is a large format cinema camera. And this is gonna give us a lot of great shallow depth of field, which is helping us out in this case because we wanna in general keep the background a little bit out of focus to avoid more A. So Matt Madden, could you turn on our frustum please? So if you look through the camera, we actually have the parallax effect happening. But if we look back at the wall, we have an image inside of the bigger image here. And we're essentially tracking the field of view of the camera. As I move side to side, you can see that the virtual background is moving back there. And as we go higher, we'll see that the horizon is shifting as well. So both of these effects combine to give us the impression that we're actually shooting in a real world location. My name is Matt Madden, and I am the virtual world supervisor here. Now, Matt mentioned that the virtual world is lighting the physical set, as you can see here. And our primary source here is actually the sky, much like the real world. So if I change the sky only, you can see I'm not only changing the physical set, I'm actually changing the virtual world too. Not only is this interactive, but it ensures that we have a match between the physical world and the digital world, which is super important when you're trying to create realistic imagery. If I've created a setup that I really like and want to save, I can easily go back to a template. And now we're back to where we started. So looking at this environment, it looks pretty good. But one area I do want to call to your attention is the intersection between the physical world and the CG world. You can see if you look through the camera, it blends pretty nicely. And that didn't happen by accident. We actually have some really powerful set extension tools in Unreal to make sure that we have a nice even blending between the physical world and the CG world. And our lead artist, Juan Gomez, is going to tell us a little bit more about how that works. Thank you, Matt. I am an Unreal Engine stage operator. This instance of Unreal, the same as the one next to me, VR Scouting, and the three rendered nodes are part of the multi-user session at any time we can make any change. 
As you guys were seeing, when Matt was changing the lighting on set, I need to be able to quickly adjust the value of the CG ground and rocks in order to match. I'm gonna be showing you how quickly I can change hues and saturations until I get a close match. And for areas where I need to have a more fine-tuned control, like this area over here, we see a dark shadow on the practical set. I'm gonna enable our color correction volumes as you can see, I just turn on that purple sphere in the middle of the set. I can move that anywhere I want to do some color adjustments. I'm gonna put it in that corner. I'm gonna reset back the values. And I'm gonna make it slightly darker. That's looking better. And I'm gonna show you off and on. As you can see, with these kind of tools, I can go into specific areas and adjust the seamless transition. Matt Workman, back to you. Great, so now we're gonna do a shot and we're gonna move from overcast lighting into sunset. So Matt Madden, could you grab me a good looking sunset sky? So I can easily do that just by loading a preset that I have for the sunset option. And there we go. So this is the right tone and the right mood, but we're still looking towards these rocks, so it's a little bit dark. Could you find us a better viewpoint uh, so we can see more of the sky? Sure thing. So now I'm just going to rotate the whole world, the sky and the landscape. How's that look, Matt? That's better, definitely. We have a better view of the sky. And so we've rotated the actual magic part of Magic Hour out of the scene. And can we spin the sky back so that we can still have some of the bright pink? So I'm spinning the sky only now, relative to the rest of the world. That looks great. Can you show us some of the virtual lighting options we have? If we need to supplement the light, that's coming from the sky itself. I have a, a library of different light sources that I can apply as an additive light to the skylight. So I just picked a circle here. You can see it's big and white right now, and I'm gonna put a little transparency on there, maybe add a little bit of a, an orangish hue to match the general tone of the sunset. Maybe take out some saturation a little bit. That's a little too orange or red on the face. And then I'm gonna wrap this around to the side so it's illuminating our actor's face. And this is where I rely on feedback from the DP to make sure the lighting is just the way they want. So Matt, what do you think? How's this feeling? Can we see it all the way up and then off and on? Okay, that's all the way up. And I'll give you a quick toggle here. And I think on is the way to go. All right. Can we add a little bit more ambient light to this scene? Yes, because I have independent control of the different panels in terms of exposure. I'll go ahead and lift the exposure of the ceiling. In this case, we're up about a half stop. That looks great. Could we just do a little bit more? There's a full stop. Also, if I want, I can warm up that light since we have a little bit of blue on the ceiling there. So we have the ability to independently adjust the color temperature as well. Great, this is looking good. So we're gonna do an actual shot now. So Vinny, if you could step off for one second. So in this shot, Vinny is going to start with his sunglasses off. He's gonna get on the bike and put them on. And we wanna pay attention to the sunglasses because they have a little bit of translucency so we'll be able to see through them and they have some reflection in them. And then we're gonna end in an in-camera lens flare on the headlight of the bike. And action. So Juan, can you go ahead and take us to the Redwoods, please? You got it. We're gonna take you to a completely new environment in about 90 seconds. Imagine if you had to redress your entire practical set in that time. By the time you're even half done getting rid of this dirt, you'll be virtually scouting in a new location, you'll be setting up lighting, and it's important to remember, we're not just taking you to another part of the same scene, we're taking you to a completely new environment, all in CG, all in real time. We use end display to seamlessly add additional render nodes and talk to additional displays, seam them all back together so that everything is in sync. In a real production volume, we might have something that's three, four, five times the size. In this current configuration, we have three separate render nodes, each with a 4K output, all seamed back together in the center of the wall. So the center left and the side screen are one render node, the center right and this right wall are one node, and the ceiling is one node. And as you can see, it seamlessly scales. And as we add more display fixtures, we can add more render nodes. With that, let's talk a little bit about this environment. 
This environment was purchased off the marketplace and it may not be perfect for in-camera finals for every shot, but it'll definitely work for organic lighting and organic reflections. There are definitely times in production where you have an asset that's not quite ready for prime time. If you look at the talent and the live set, this has fantastic lighting and reflections that we can get out of the virtual set, even in the current form. It's really just the background we're talking about that might not make the cut. So if you run into that situation, we can easily throw a green screen in front of it and also add tracking markers for post. So we have the benefit of getting all this wonderful live action lighting and also the safety of being able to do a composite and post. Simultaneously, we can do a live composite of this current CG asset over the green, so the director and the DP can still compose the shot as if the assets were really there. So if you look closely at the bike again and the sunglasses, you still have all these great reflections and lighting on the bike and the set, even with the green screen background. You're still preserving that realism, but you also have the ability to go back to a composite and post if you need to. Thanks for joining us. Lux Machina wants to invite everyone to come back later on in the year, continue collaborating on in-camera visual effects workflows, and look at new opportunities for using Unreal Engine 4. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you all had a great time.